Welcome back. Last time, we spent quite a bit of time on inputs. Let's go ahead and look at options for outputs, which are also called sinks in this session. First though, I'll create a test model to drop blocks into as we discuss them. And I'll also open the library browser as well and navigate to the sinks section to view output blocks. We've already looked at the numeric display output. We've looked at the scope output, but I want to say a couple of additional things about scopes. So I'll go ahead and pull one into my model. The first thing I want to point out is that you can change how many inputs a scope has. If you want your inputs to be on separate sets of axes within the scope, the scope will allow you to specify the number of independent subscopes that you would like within it. To illustrate this, I'll pull two constant blocks into my model, open the scope block, click on the gear icon and set the number of input ports to two. I'll also click on layout and select two contiguous blocks. Now I'll connect the two constant inputs to the scope's two inputs, change one of the constant blocks values to two and run the simulation. You'll see that the constant blocks outputs appear in two separate windows of the scope. Often, however, you want to graphically view several signals in the same window. In that case, just set the layout, accessible from the scope's gear icon, to use a single pane. This is also the default layout, incidentally. If you are using an older version of Simulink, you may need to make sure that both constant inputs have the same data type, and then mux those signals together and feed the mux block output into a single scope input. We'll discuss data types in detail in an upcoming lesson, by the way. If you're using an older version of Simulink, you may also find that the scopes by default limit the number of data points that they show. If you're plotting data during a longer simulation, the scope can easily cut off the data from the first part of the simulation. This is annoying, so I recommend that you deselect the option to only show the last 5,000 data points. I think there have only been one or two cases where I found myself wanting to use the option to only see the most recent data points. Most of the time, you want the flexibility to be able to see every Everything that happened during your simulation with a signal of interest. Thankfully, this isn't an issue in the latest Simulink release, so if you're using a very recent version of Simulink, you won't have to worry about it. Okay, the next output or sync that I want to mention is the to workspace output. This works just like the from workspace block that we discussed in the last lesson. The out block similarly to the in block, is used often in models intended for compilation to embedded code, as well as in subsystems. The terminator is an often used block. Sometimes you use it when you have an output that you want to do something with later, but for now, you just want to simulate with what you have. In that case, you might use the terminator to terminate a signal. In embedded code, you can use it in cases where you want to record a signal with a test point, for example, but you weren't planning to use that signal for anything else. If you are doing much parametric plotting, perhaps you will want to use an XY graph. If you want to see the phase portrait for a Van der Paul oscillator, or you're doing some work with system stability, or you're looking at hysteresis, this can be helpful for you. There are a few other options here in the Simulink library browser, but I don't see people using them very often, so I'll leave them to your analysis if you believe that they look like they will be helpful for the work that you're doing. I hope that you've learned from the material presented today on Output Syncs. Inputs and outputs are blocks that show up in all models, so I anticipate that this lesson and the previous lesson will be really useful for you. I have a number of things that I need to discuss that I've promised to tell you about in previous lessons, as well as just some general knowledge that I think will be helpful for you. Things like data types, sample times, and sample rates, and inheritance. We'll delve into all those things and more in the next session, so I hope you'll join me and build your Simulink skill set some more next time.